everything that has mass also has a property called density, even air. Density is the amount of mass in a given volume for an object. It may sound complicated, but it really isn't. Here, let me show you. To calculate density, you need two measurements. First is the mass of an object. Second is the volume of an object. So you take the mass of the object, then divide it by the volume, and you get density. Voila! Density equals mass divided by volume. If you need help remembering this, draw a heart really quick. Got your heart drawn? Okay, now what I'm going to ask you to do is draw a line cutting your heart in half horizontally. Okay? When you do that, if you split that heart apart now, you're left with two letters. The letter M on top over the letter V on bottom. So you can see density equals mass divided by volume. So don't forget the heart. So what do you think? You want to try one? Well, even if you don't, I'm going to show you anyway. So here's our first example. This barbell has a mass of 10,000 grams and a volume of 1,200 cubic centimeters. So we can calculate the density using the equation density equals mass divided by volume. When we do the equation, this is what we come up with. Density equals 10,000 grams divided by 1,200 centimeters cubed, and we get a density of 8.3 grams per centimeter cubed. Pretty easy, isn't it? Let's try another one. Okay, so for this example, we're going to concentrate on using this box right here. Okay? So, we have a box that has a mass of 400 grams. The box has a total volume of 2,610 cubic centimeters. So we're going to calculate the density using the equation density equals mass divided by volume. And here's what we get. Density is equal to 400 grams divided by 2,610 centimeters cubed. And we get a density of 0 0.15 grams per centimeter cubed. Let's see if you can figure this one out. A box has a mass of 3,000 grams. You have measured the box and found that it has a length of 20 centimeters, a width of 10 centimeters, and a height of 8 centimeters. What is the density of the box? Pause the video while you work it out. It's answer time! Since I gave you the mass, you needed to find the volume of the box to complete the equation for density. So your first step was to find the volume of the box by multiplying length times width times height. So your volume would be equal to 20 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 8 centimeters, giving you a volume of 1,600 cubic centimeters. Your next step was to then calculate density. Remember, density equals mass divided by volume. So your density would be equal to 3,000 grams divided by 1,600 cubic centimeters, and you come up with a density of 1.9 grams per cubic centimeter. Did you get it right? Let's move on to calculating density when you have to get volume by displacement. Remember, this only works if the object actually sinks. So we're going to start with this rock over here. This rock has a mass of 580 grams. If you remember, we 
first have to fill in our graduated cylinder with just plain water to a certain level to start with. And we read that level at the bottom of the meniscus. So we get our starting volume, which in this case is 130 milliliters. Then we take our rock, pick it up, and gently place it down into the container of water. And our water level is going to rise up to this case, reading at the bottom, we are at 230 milliliters. Okay? So our ending volume is 230. Now to get the volume of the rock, if you remember correctly, we have to take our ending volume, subtract our starting volume, and we get the volume of the rock. So we are taking 230 milliliters minus 130 milliliters, and we get 100 milliliters or 100 centimeters cubed. If you remember from the previous video, one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. So now that we have volume, we can do the density calculation. So to calculate the density of our rock, we're going to take its mass, divide it by its volume, and that will give us our density. So we take 580 grams, divide by 100 centimeters cubed, and we get a density of 5.8 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, now it's your turn. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to find the density of this toy car. This toy car is going to have a mass of 125 grams. Now it's time for you to find the density. Remember, Get your starting volume first, and then get your ending volume after adding the car, and do the math. All right, you can hit pause. Definitely hit pause. Go ahead, do the math. Okay, if you did it correctly, this is what should have happened. First, you calculated the volume of the car. So you took your ending volume, subtracted your starting volume, which is equal to 170 milliliters minus 90 milliliters, and the volume of your car was 80 milliliters or 80 centimeters cubed. Again, remember, one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. So, now that you had volume, you could get density. The density of the car is equal to mass divided by volume. So, we take our mass of 125 grams, divide it by our volume of 80 centimeters cubed, and we get a density of 1.6 grams per centimeter cubed. Did you get it? So why should you care about density in the first place? Well, here's why. Density tells us if something will sink or float. So take, for example, pure water. Pure water has a density of one gram per centimeter cubed or one gram per milliliter. This is a very, very important number for you to remember. All right, so let's take a look at our iceberg over here. The iceberg floats because ice is less dense than pure water, so it will stay on top of the water. Now, when we're building a ship, we have to make sure it is less dense than pure water. Otherwise, guess what's going to happen, guys? The boat's going to sink. So, not only is there environmental considerations to take into account, like the fact that ice floats on top of water, which helps to save the lives of many fish during the wintertime and other aquatic organisms. 
we have to look at it from an engineering standpoint as well. So when a shipbuilder is building a ship, they have to make sure that overall the ship is going to be less dense than pure water so that it doesn't go down to the bottom of the ocean. Let me give you a couple more examples, okay? So we have a hot air balloon, which is right over here, okay? The hot air balloon actually floats upward because the hot gases inside the balloon are less dense than the surrounding air. So the balloon goes up. Now, have you ever wondered why when you buy balloons at the store, your mom used to always tell you, hang on to those balloons tightly? Well, that's because helium is actually less dense than our atmosphere. So pure helium, which is what is filling your balloon, is less dense than the air our atmosphere is made of. So if you let go, whoopsie, your helium balloon is going to float away. So let's play a game. The game is called Sink or Float. The rules are simple. If you think an object will sink because it's more dense than pure water, say sink. If you think it will float because it is less dense than pure water, say float. You have until the music ends on each slide to give your answer. Let's go. The steel boat anchor sinks. That's because steel has an average density of 8 grams per centimeter cubed. Definitely greater than water's density of 1 gram per centimeter cubed. All right, let's move on to number two. You guessed it. The cork actually floats. Cork has an average density of 0.24 grams per centimeter cubed. It's less than that of water, so it's going to float. Let's go to number three. All right, the rubber car tire sinks. You see, rubber has an average density of 1.52 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, for those of you who are sitting there thinking, but wait a minute, a tire holds air. Mm, yeah, it does. But in order for your car tire to hold air, it has to have the rim in the center of it. You need to go out and look at your parents' car real quick. You will be able to see there is a rim in the center. And because of that, that is what traps the air inside the tire. So without that rim, your average car tire, it's going to sink. All right, the wooden board actually floats. Wood has an average density of 0.75 grams per centimeter cubed, which means wood will float. Now, eventually, if it's floating on the ocean long enough or out on a lake, it is going to become saturated with water. And when that happens, then the board will sink. But that could take a while. Let's move on to number five. All right, motor oil floats. Motor oil has an average density of 0 0.87 grams per centimeter cubed, less than that of pure water, remember, which is one gram per centimeter cubed. Okay, let's go on to number six. You're doing good, guys.
Okay, guys. So the sun would actually sink. Our sun has a density of 1.41 grams per centimeter cubed. Don't believe me? Look it up. Yep. The sun is more dense than pure water. Of course, we would have a hard time sinking the sun because, well, it's burning so hot it would actually boil all the water off before it ever actually got there. But that's not the point. The point is, if we could put it on top of water, it would sink. All right, let's move on to number seven. All right, the average human would actually float. Average humans have a density of roughly 1.01 grams per centimeter cubed. So we do actually float. Now, there's a reason that it's harder for some people than others to float on the surface of the water. And that has to do with the amount of fat in the body. People who have more fat have an easier time floating than people who have more muscle. Well, now it's time for you to practice. Go to the link listed in the description below. Complete the worksheet labeled Calculating Density. Then complete the worksheet labeled Sink or Float. You can also try the density column experiment from California State University, Bakersfield. Hope you learned something today.